Unsurprisingly, I've been spending a shit ton of time inside recently, but this isn't all bad, mainly because it's allowed me to not only spend a lot of time with my existing audio equipment, but been able to play with new things too. And that has led me to this pure and simple statement. You really need to add to your audio setup a pair of open back planner magnetic headphones. Before I go on, let's actually clarify that statement about open back planner magnetic headphones. Really, that only applies if you already have a strong foundation in your audio adventures. For example, this means you either have a hi-fi or a decent DAC, a pair of solid headphones, and of course, some speakers. But now we've got that little bit out of the way, let's go on and talk about some of the terms and define really what a pair of open back planar magnetic headphones actually are. If you've been following any of our other recent videos and you know what, you really should be, you know we like to kick these things off with a bit of a jazzy explainer and this time is no different. So in this little section, we're gonna cover four main points. What are closed back headphones? What are open back headphones? What are dynamic driver headphones? And what are planar magnetic headphones? So let's do it. Most likely these are the headphones you already have. Closed back, that term refers to the enclosure, the literal bit of the headphone that surrounds your ears. The idea, as the name makes quite clear, is to isolate you, is to keep you closed and separated from the world. With this in mind, what it does is attempt to stop any sound getting in or out of the ear cups. Now, this is fantastic if you're out in public as it stops the sound leaking and to stop those people next to you on public transport having to hear about your terrible, heartbreaking obsession with early Miley Cyrus albums. But there is also a negative side to closed back headphones because as I mentioned, they are isolated and trap in sound. You can get some examples in music where it creates tiny little echoes between the enclosure and your ear. You'll have guessed now what open back headphones are. Effectively, they allow sound to travel in and out of the enclosure. They aren't designed to keep things in there and keep you isolated. Now, what this does is creates like a real beautiful spaciousness in the sound. It allows far more free movement of air and gives you this impression of being in the room with the music itself. But there is a negative downside of this as there's sound leakage. If you're sat next to someone who is listening to a pair of open back headphones, you know about it. Closed back headphones have enclosures that try and actively stop sound traveling between your ears and the outside world. Open back headphones don't. And for the next part of the video, we're gonna discuss what the difference between dynamic driver headphones and planar magnetic ones are. But to help us with that, we've drafted in our brilliant, intelligent, and well-versed colleague, Napier, to walk you through it. Over to you, bud. So technically, planar magnetics are a type of dynamic driver, but the most obvious difference is in their shape. A typical dynamic driver headphone uses the cone-shaped diaphragm with a voice coil that's stuck to the back. So when an electrical signal passes through that voice coil, it causes the diaphragm to move towards and away from a magnet, creating sound waves. The problem is that the voice coil is usually attached to a small central portion of the diaphragm, so the entire surface doesn't always move in complete unison. Planar magnetic drivers also use a magnetic field, but the diaphragm is planar, so flat. The diaphragm has thin wires that are embedded throughout the whole surface and usually beefy magnets on either side. Because the force is distributed evenly across the diaphragm, the whole thing moves in unison. So what does that mean in practice? Planar magnetic diaphragms are typically larger than their dynamic counterparts, which can lead to deeper bass, especially in an open back design. They also create a flat sound wave that arguably creates a bigger sound stage. And that even movement also helps them play louder without audibly distorting. On the other hand, dynamic drivers are often punchier than planar magnetic ones, and the headphones tend to be lighter and smaller as they don't require as beefy magnets as you'll find in planar magnetic hands. Ultimately, keep in mind these are just generalizations and the implementation matters much more than the specific technology. The 
The question here is simple. Why have I combined the two? And the answer is really just a straightforward. It's because you will have the biggest difference. If you try a pair of open back planar magnetic headphones for the first time, and you're only used to your closed back dynamic driver ones, you're gonna find a huge, huge new world of audio listening there for you. Yes, there is definitely a sense of value there if you want to go and get all the different parts. So you wanna match like a open back planar magnetic, a closed back planar magnetic, an open back and closed back dynamic drive, and you have all those parts. But at the end of the day, we're not made of money. We've touched on this already in both the descriptions of the enclosures and Napier's talk on the difference between dynamic driver and planar magnetic. Now, the first thing is the spaciousness. You really feel as though music is flowing through and over you. There's like a lightness to open back headphones that is just magnificent. It's as though you're in the room with the musicians. You combine this with the planar magnetic element as well, which includes this kind of flat neutral sound. And excitingly, there's this element of the instruments really separating and popping out in an incredibly natural and balanced way. No, you won't get as much as a thumping bass as you will with dynamic drivers, but you get this rounded richness that really you have to hear to fully experience. Now, a little disclaimer before we go any further. I am not saying that open back or planar magnetic headphones are better than the pairs that you have. The important thing is that they're different. They give you a different way of exploring and appreciating music and that is beautiful in itself. Anyway, now that's out of the way, there are two pairs of headphones I wanted to chat about today. The Hi-Fi Man HE400i and the Monoprice Monolith M1070. The reason I chose these is basically they're on the lower end of the open back planar magnetic scale. We go from the Hi-Fi Man one being a very good budget option to just a step above that with the Monoprice Monolith M1070. Two things before we continue though, this isn't meant to be a comparison. They both do different things at different price range. What I'm doing more is showing you the first steps you can take in this sort of field. And secondly, these little reviews won't be hugely detailed. I'm just going to give a general overview. If you want a bit more information, head into the description below and you can find our full article where I'll talk about them both a little bit more. So let's do it. The HE 400i, and these are the 2020 model, by the way, come in at a fantastic price, $200. And the, one of the first things you notice about them when you pick them up is how light they are. They're 370 grams, and when you're wearing them, it's like they're barely there. They're supremely comfortable, and I've spent many, many hours listening to them. Um, I guess on the one negative side, there's maybe a slight cheapness to the build quality, but as they're mainly gonna be at home, it shouldn't be too much of a concern. Now, onto the sound. The HE400i have probably one of the best examples of price to sound quality ratio I've ever come across. The trebles are sparkling, the mids are full bodied. It's just a real fun, exciting listen. The music has fantastic clarity. It's got really phenomenal speed and there's just a sharpness to everything that's going on. Personally, I feel like I would like the bass to be a little bit more powerful, but I have noticed that this changes depending on the DAC or really whatever system we're using to drive the HE400i. Really though, these headphones are about the mids. That seems to be, to my ears, what they focus on, really pushing forward that range and making you know vocal focused music, which is a lot of what we listen to, a priority. I mean, overall, these things are just a fun, energetic, and supremely enjoyable listen, especially for the price. Um, just one thing I would say, though, is you do need to make sure you have something half decent to drive them with, but we've been speaking about that since the beginning of the video, so you should know it by now. So the Monoprice Monolith M1070 Clock in double the price of the Hi-Fi Man HE400i. So that means they sell for $400, which in my mind pushes them above on another bracket. 
They come in a bit heavier than the Hi-Fi Man models. They are 580 grams. And if you've never seen a pair of open back paramagnetic headphones before, you will be tickled by the sheer size of the things. They are gargantuan, but I will point out they are still a dream and supremely comfortable to wear. Um, a quick note on the build quality is you can definitely see the leap up here. They are solid, gorgeous, aesthetically pleasing, amazing looking headphones. I'm a big, big fan. The sound really is something. The mids are lush and strong, and then you have this beautiful, detailed, rounded bass, and the whole lower end in general is like powerful, has a little bit of punchiness without ever becoming overbearing. The texture of the sounds is amazing. The sound stage is sometimes a little bit cramped, but overall is spacious and enthralling, while the instruments separate clearly and with precision. The highs are clear and spacious at most points, even though I would like a little bit more detail on that upper register. And there is occasion when the low end is really kicking in that some of the crispness of that top part is lost, but overall, it's fantastic, it's a phenomenal experience. Overall, the Monolith M1 070 are a fantastic pair of open back planet magnetic headphones. They have a whole lot of strengths and really, for the price point, not very many weaknesses. I don't think you could go wrong with either the sets of cans I suggested. Obviously, the Monolith are more expensive and they have some benefits because of that, but I think all you need to remember is whatever your budget is, you're gonna have a fantastic time with a pair of open back planet magnetic headphones. While I got a bit granular there, the most important thing to remember is that using a pair of open back planet magnetic headphones is, more than anything, fun. They're not better or worse than dynamic driver headphones, they're just different. And that makes them incredibly refreshing and gives you a new way to experience music that you already love. Just to reiterate, this is just my opinion and I was just tracking my experience of using these different pairs of headphones. I think one of the joys of listening is it's different to everyone. Not only do we have completely different hearing profiles, but there are a range of preferences in each and every one of us. And you know what's even cooler about that? Is there is a whole goddamn world filled with amazing headphones that can be geared directly to you that you can find that one jewel that's out there that fits you like a glove, like an ear glove, I guess, I don't know. So do your own research. There is a gamut of different headphones that can just be the perfect fit for you. But to help you along the way, Napier and I have thrown together a little list of some open back planet magnetic headphones that are probably worth you going and reading about. Have a look. To sum this up, if you're looking to buy your first ever set of decent headphones, do not buy a pair of open back planner magnetics. Instead, what I'd recommend is you go for a closed back noise cancelling pair of wireless cans that also have a wide option. Why? because they're simply the most useful pair of headphones you can get. They're amazing for commuting, being in the office, walking around. They're just a workhorse set of headphones and you'll just get an incredible amount of mileage from something like that. But, and this is the meat, if you already have a solid audio setup, a decent foundation and looking to build, then God damn, you need to get yourself a pair of open back planner magnetic headphones. As I've said a few times in this, they're not better and they're not worse than the standard pair of headphones that you might have, but they are different and they'll allow you to reap so much joy in weirdly surprising ways from music that you know and love. Not only have I just been experiencing daily feelings of elation of listening to music that I love in different ways, I'm hearing different sounds or different elements, different textures. It really has been fantastic, especially when we kicked off this video, I've been spending a lot of time indoors. So, so my main point, got a little bit of spare cash, a nice audio setup, and looking for a new experience, then you need to go get yourself a pair of open back planner magnetic headphones. 
دیوانو گره